even if we're not going to worry about spot colors, you may want to have slightly more flexibility than simply a range of tints. What about complementary colors? Well, if we have color selected, we can look at the color guide and we could look at harmony rules. We can start out with simply selecting a complementary color, that is the color on the opposite side of the color spectrum. We can also go for some collections of more colors, so a lighter and a darker variation, and lighter and darker variations on the opposite side of the color wheel, with just a little variation on hue. And there's a variety of things we could choose, left complement, monochromatic, analogous, triad, etc. How do we get to see how these harmony rules were actually generated? Well, we press this button here, Edit Colors. When we look at Edit Colors, we still have access to the same harmony rules. And you can see that left complement is an option which has your original color here, colors slightly more and less saturated uh, surrounding it, and then opposite, but just a little off the 180 degree line, we have three colors in similar positions over there. Now, if I was to move the color around and go for a green to start with, it'll become pinks. And we'll see the active colors that I'm left with up here from the same harmony rule. You can drag in and out to move the saturation in and out for all of these colors at once. And you can use these sliders if you want more precise control over hue or saturation. You can also access brightness using the sliders and brightness gives you control you can't get by simply dragging the color wheel. If you want a darker feel for all of these colors, by all means drag brightness down. Looking through the harmony rules to see which best suits your style and the, look, your look, the effect you're looking for is a good idea. Complementary starts out being directly across from one another. Analogous is all colors around the same region. We've seen the left complement and right complement, which are a little bit off being straight ahead. And there's also compounds, which are slightly more spread out. And tetrads, which are from all different parts of the color spectrum. Starting from tetrads, and perhaps we might be happy with that set of active colors, I could save that as a new color group by pressing this button up here. And it gets added to the existing color groups in my swatches. I could also add in additional uh, sets of colors based on different harmony rules. For example, if I want to experiment with this uh, purple plus mustard yellow combination, then I could create an additional color group there. You can open them out to see exactly what all the colors are, and you can, of course, tweak them and pick a different set. There's a watermelon group, which I could use. Now, if you like most of these colors, but just want maybe a little bit more variation, you can, in fact, unlink these harmony colors, pull one color a little bit further away, and then relink them. The color relationship stays, I can move any of these around and I'll just get a slightly different set of active colors. One slightly obscure option here is that if desired, you could limit these colors to, for example, only use colors from a specific color book. So if I choose Pantone Solid Coated, my color spectrum suddenly changes. It's no longer smooth, but I can be assured that I'll be able to pick any collection of six spot colors that I'm looking for. And as you change the brightness, you'll see these patches change completely. After you finish building your color groups, set OK and be sure to save changes as you leave.